All right, everyone, we are back from collecting our water samples within the stream. Uh, we actually only have one water sample today, but if we were typically in fish science, we would have gone to an upstream and a downstream spot on the, on the creek. Um, if we were at Panther Creek, we'd go from the top, take all of our measurements there, do everything, do an electrofishing survey, water quality, YSI readings, discharge, gradient, collecting inverts, um, taking a water sample, and we would do the same at a downstream location. So it normally would take a good chunk of our lab time, but to save time and just to show you guys how to do this, um, we're just gonna do one sample for today. So here we have our fish farmer test kit. Um, open this up and it has a bunch of chemicals in it and directions on how to run uh, tests with these chemicals to understand what's going on with the water. So typically we do alkalinity, hardness, and ammonia. We're also gonna look at turbidity, but that is not part of this kit. Um, we'll show that in a little bit, probably in a little bit. Um, so first we're gonna do alkalinity. We always do alkalinity high range first because that is um, a good practice to do because if it's low range, you may not be able to see that um, right away. So we'll just start with the high range. So this is pretty much just cookbook chemistry. This is gonna tell you everything that you need to do. You have all the directions here. Make sure you read them because there are things that we need to multiply by. Um, understand what the measuring tube is and the viewing tube and all of the chemicals. So first for alkalinity, I am going to grab the measuring tube, which is right here. Not to be confused with the viewing tube, which everyone confuses it anyway. I put it on every exam, everyone forgets it. Measuring tube, viewing tube. The viewing tube is for ammonia. So, we're gonna take our water sample, open it up. Jeez Louise. What Macho Man put this on? That did. All right, so we're gonna take our measuring tube. Fill it all the way up. We have a test tube here. Um, a good practice to do, in my opinion, uh, you don't have to follow me, but I'm gonna put some water in this over the sink, wash it out so there's no residual chemicals in it, no water from last time, make sure everything's good. So I will be right back. So now that we're back, all washed out, I'm gonna take this measuring tube, I'm gonna pour this into um, our mixing bottle. All right, so as this says, it says add one drop of phenothaline indicator solution, swirl to mix. If the solution is colorless, the phenothaline alkalinity is zero, and you have to skip to step six. I have not seen too many places with phenothaline alkalinity, so I'm not too worried about this. So let's see, you mix this up. This is our phenothaline indicator solution. To get a proper drop, you need to turn your bottle completely upright and squeeze it once so you get a full drop right in there. Boop. One drop right there. Swirl to mix. Sometimes it's hard to see, but I like to put our uh, our bottle right onto the to a paper right here, and and I'm not seeing any pink, so it looks like we can move to step to step six. Um, step six is to add one bromosyl green methyl red pillow packet and swirl to mix. Okay, so let's see here. We have chloride, dissolved oxygen. Bromosyl green, methyl red, indicator pillow packet. Open this up. Give it a flick or two. It has a little tear button right here, or a tear tab. It opens up. Usually not well. And we're gonna pour that in. Make sure all of it's in there, which it is. And now our solution is a green color. So we're gonna add for step seven, sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid standard solution by drops. You're gonna mix after each drop, count the drops until the color changes from green to pink as soon as it stays. So as soon as you have a color change that stays, even maybe if it's not perfectly pink, that's what you're gonna wanna look at. So put this down right here. I'm gonna grab the sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid, okay. Again, with those drops, you're gonna wanna hold the dropper right up and down. And get it open. My goodness. Having some technical difficulties. All right, so I'm gonna grab some of the drop. All right, one drop. We're gonna swirl to mix. Okay, no color change yet. 
Drop number two. Drop number three. No color change. Four. Ooh, I can see it changed a little. Five. Six. Mm. Seven. Oh, it still goes back. Eight. Looks like it's going to be probably eight. All right, nine. Nine is our number here. So with that alkalinity of nine, or that drop number of nine, you're going to multiply that by 17.1. So it's in your directions here to get your um, results in milligrams per liter of CaCO3. We're gonna take our calculator right here. We're gonna do nine times 17.1. We have an alkalinity of 153.9. And most of you know from your limiting factor sheet that alkalinity ranges from about 100 to 400. That's an optimal range, and it looks like this is an optimal range. Um, all right, so now we're gonna do hardness. Again, this is another cookbook chemistry thing from this packet in our fish farmer kit. Um, you didn't see it, but I did rinse this out with some stream water. So for this, it says your test for procedure would be to fill the measuring tube up to the top. We are going to put it in our mixing bottle, as you see here. It says add three drops of hardness one buffer solution. So they were all in the kit. We pulled some out here. Uh, this is hardness three, it's hardness two, hardness one. So we're gonna add three drops of this hardness one buffer solution. Again, holding this uh, right up and down. One, two, three, close that up, and turn the bottle to mix. Left and right to mix. All right, add one drop of hardness indicator two. A pink color will develop. Again, one complete drop. It's on the side, of course. some of that extra. All right, mix that around. It's on the inside. <laughs> All right, so we have that pink color now. So the next thing you're gonna do is add the hardness three titrant, drop by drop, and count when the um, color changes. So kind of like our last one with alkalinity, same thing, we're gonna look for that complete color change. All right, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, and there's our color change. So there's nine. So again, just like the alkalinity, we're going ha to have to multiply the number of drops by 17.1. So I'm gonna pull out my calculator. So number of drops, we had nine times 17.1, 153.9. Same thing as alkalinity. Um, again, this is within optimal range, 100 to 400 is what you're gonna want for your hardness. Um, hardness is your calcium and magnesium ions used by plankton. Um, so this would be good for um, any water body. Um, so for our last test using the fish farmer kit, we're gonna look at ammonia. Um, again, another cookbook chemistry coming right out of this packet here. It says ammonia, gives you all the things that you need. So first we're gonna grab our two viewing tubes, not to be confused with the measuring tube. Um, they're right in here already, they fit right in here. Um, if you look in this, this is oh, our ammonia wheel. Um, this wheel helps you understand where, how or how many milligrams per liter you have in your water body. Um, I'll show you along and how we use this in a few minutes. So, 
We're gonna fill the two test tubes to the first line, which is five milliliters. So I'm going to, I'm actually gonna fill this up, make it a little bit easier for me. I'm gonna fill this other one up. Ooh, a little too much. Gotta get that meniscus wrong. Still a little too much. Really don't know what I'm doing. All right, so we have five, and this is just about five too. So put them right in there. So we're gonna add three drops of Nestler reagent to the second tube, which is the second tube is right here. We're gonna grab Nestler. Not really good, you don't wanna get it on you. So let's hope I don't. <laughs> All right, second tube gets three drops. One, two, three. I'm gonna swirl the mix and a, ye uh, a yellow color will develop. We go. Wait one minute, read the result within five. So we're gonna come back here in a minute and then we'll uh, show you what happened. All right, so it's been about a minute. And so we have the viewing box here. We have, again have that color wheel and we're gonna start out at zero. And what we're gonna do is look through either of these windows to see if our solution with the Nestler in it change color and it is able to tell us what the ammonia is. So what you're gonna do is take the color wheel, you're gonna spin it to zero. I don't even know where zero is. Uh, there it is, there's zero. What you're gonna do is hold it up to a light source. You may not be able to see it as well as I am right now, but we're gonna move this color wheel to see if it changes to match this. So this is where the colors are within the wheel. This is our solution and it'll tell us if we have any ammonia. So honestly, to me, I really just see like a zero reading. I'm um, thinking there's no ammonia in this, which is good.